The Land Rover Discovery 3 only has brake wear sensors on one side, so sometimes the first you'll know that there's a problem is when you hear a grinding sound or a wearing sound from your wheels. This is when the brake pad material has got down to the bare metal. As you see here, the brake disc is now scored where the brake pad material has worn away. To change the rear brake pads and discs, start by putting the car into the electronic part brake service mode. To do this, turn the ignition to position 2, then press the foot brake brake three times and hold down. Then push the part brake switch down for about five seconds. Next, remove the electronic part brake fuse. Then loosen the lug nuts. Chock all wheels that will remain on the ground. Jack according to the manual and place a axle stand under the chassis rail. Then remove the lug nuts and the wheel. There are many good videos on YouTube showing how to remove the rear disc. However, nobody else seems to have the same difficulty that I do with this disc retaining screw. They are probably all just better mechanics than I am, but I always struggle to get this undone. An impact driver is the favoured option for this, but it never seems to work for me. Perhaps next time I'll try an air impact driver on it. In the end I resort to cutting a slot into the uh, screw. And typically I have to chase it round with a chisel. This process took a lot longer than is shown here. I then remove the upper and lower slider pin bolts with a 13mm socket. Once these are removed, the caliper can then be pulled away. With a flathead screwdriver, prise the pistons back slightly, 
so that uh, the caliper will be removed more easily. Either tie the caliper up somewhere or rest it on something as I've done. In this way, you'll not put any strain on the brake hose. This slider pin is very dry, which could be the reason for the uneven wear if the caliper wasn't moving freely. The 15mm 12 point socket remove the upper and lower caliper carrier bolts. Note. Only a 12-point socket will work with these bolts. The caliper carrier can then be removed. Remove the old brake pads. Before compressing the caliper piston, remove the lid of the reservoir, then place some cloth underneath the reservoir just in case there is some brake fluid overflow. Hammer on the old disc to loosen it, but be careful not to hit the stud bolts. This can take a very long time. I check that the new brake disc is the same size as the one that came off my car and then I clean it completely with brake cleaner.
this process removes the greasy film that is put on the new discs by the manufacturer to protect it while being shipped. I clean up around the brake shoes using an air hose. When doing this, I always wear eye protection and a face mask so I do not inhale particles. I clean up the caliper carrier and the ca caliper itself with a wire brush, air hose and brake cleaner. Then I remove the clips Once the clips and both slider pins are removed, I then blow air down the slider pin holes to clean them out. I then fit new brake pad clips. I then pack the slider pin holes with the slider pin grease supplied with the new pins that I purchased. Fit slider pin boots and then the slider pins. After having greased them with the correct slider pin grease. Fit new disc, making sure that the countersunk hole lines up with the hole for the retaining screw that is in the hub. Tap around the outside of the disc to make sure that it is seated properly. Apply some copper grease to the thread of the Torx T50 retaining screw. I torque this screw up to 35 newton meters. I use medium strength thread lock on the caliper carrier bolts. Finger tighten the upper and lower caliper carrier bolts. These bolts are then torqued to 115 newton meters. That process is not shown here.
add a smear of copper grease to the upper and lower lugs of the brake pad and also to the backing shims on the inner side and outer side. Make sure that the copper grease does not get onto the disc. Compress the brake piston as far back as possible. I fitted new slider pin bolts. These bolts were torqued to 35 newton meters as per the Haynes manual instruction. On the UK model, the rear brake wear sensor is located on the offside. If the brake pads are not worn down on that side, the sensor might be okay to reuse. I cleaned the wear sensor with some contact spray before refitting. Refit the 30 amp parking brake fuse and the plastic covers. Tighten up the brake fluid reservoir cap and then refit the cover. If fitting new brake shoes or even just new rear discs, the electronic parking brake needs to be adjusted afterwards.
To make this adjustment, I raise both back wheels off the ground, place the car in neutral, and make sure that the electronic parking brake is off. There are two points of adjustment. One is a ratchet and the other is a 4mm Allen key bolt. I rotate the disc until I can see the ratchet adjuster with a torch through the viewing port. With a flathead screwdriver, turn the adjuster towards the spring to tighten the electronic parking brake. I tighten it so I cannot move the disc with the screwdriver. Then I try to move the disc with my torque wrench set at 60 newton meters. I cannot move the disc with my torque wrench at 60 newton meters. I then begin the process of backing off the ratchet adjuster. The adjuster should be backed off by exactly eight turns, not shown here. Then I move the disc so that I can view the four millimeter Allen key adjuster. I back this off by half a turn. Then, with a rubber mallet, I tap around the shoe area to release any tension. Finally, I refit the road wheels, tighten using the proper pattern, and then torque the lug nuts to 140 Newton meters.